What's up, Sassy Gamers? Today is January 6th, 2022, and this is Season 2, Episode 30, The Big 3-0, and uh, I've got our attention podcast, and I'm with, uh, actually... What the fuck is going on? I'm actually with... There's four Bruno. of us here. Who's this guy in Bruno. this sweater? Bruno. That and says Gundam Bruno. wing something. I don't think we have anybody else on the show today. It's just Bruno. It's just, it's just me. Three yeah, other it's I'm the only one. The Bruno show. <laughs> yeah. And for those listening, he actually is here. That's actually his voice. Season this one, episode 1000 of the Bruno show. <laughs> this, is, this is actually just a hologram. I'm not really here. This is pre-recorded. Yeah. It's pretty so, easy. yeah, obviously uh, we got Day Drinker Kelly uh, in the house. Uh, we got, you know, Brian, the, the Phoenix Nova. And, uh, you know, Bruno the Unicorn. So, I mean, Demurin. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah. Same difference. <laughs> he does have a sweet, shiny have horn him. and beard. Oh, my. Oh, my. That's interesting. Wow. Okay. Well, today's show is going to be very interesting because we've got uh, a recap of last year. I know uh, most of you guys probably watched some of the Game Awards uh, over the past year. And I'm sure a lot of you have probably had thoughts on games that you played last year and just different things in the gaming space that occurred over the last year that were a little different than normal because we're still kind of living in this weird, you know, new alternate reality sort of thing. And um, we so pledge me, we pledge it, to give just as much production value as the game awards did as well. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Unless you've got some more crazy. Do we have alligator playing. brides? Do we have any alligator brides? <laughs> No, we don't. No, we, we, got, we got Bruno Unicorn. That's even better. Oh, yeah, that's true. true. I mean, Unicorn Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it so. has been a, a couple of steps back. It's, uh, you know, that joke about 2022, like 2020 also. So uh, I got... <laughs> I, got, I, got uh, a, I hadn't I heard that before, actually. There. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's well. good. Well, I my mean, 2022 seriously, has been starting off like that. So. 2020 is the longest year ever. And it it really has is. not it's stopped. Here. <laughs> yep, yeah. it's still here. I mean, it's, you know, it's been evolving. You know, 2020, we didn't leave our house at all. Then 2021, we, we, we kind of left our house. Mm. And hopefully 2022, we'll be able to actually leave our house. I haven't uh, left more. my house in like four days. Yeah. Four days. I mean, and the whole work run out of wine. Too, it's like, it's, it's, oh, you know, shit. we're constantly home. <laughs> uh, Somebody yeah, needs to like, uh, oh. where, where's my boozer app? Someone needs yeah, to emergency cool. boozer. They actually have, they have those now. Yeah. I've got, I've got plenty of booze. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Sure. Wait for reserve. Yes. Yeah. We're open to um, two opportunities. Both me and Mike are on point. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man, oh, they sponsor man. me all the time. I'll say, yes. They, <laughs> Anytime I, I have the chance to let them sponsor me, they sponsor me. If I keep drinking them, I'm going to need a sponsor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So uh, again, things got suddenly got dark. About. We kind of need mm. to get into it, but before we do, let's uh, give credit where credits due. <clears throat> let's go to Kelly's corner. Come on, I'm gonna make more. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep it short, <laughs> but like me, Mike. Yes, just like Mike, not like me at all. I'm very tall. I am like six eight. Um. Uh, oh, <laughs> are you the tall note. lady from Resident Evil? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, ex exactly. Exactly. Lady Demetria, yeah. whatever. Um, I do have a friend. Um, who uh, Mike just met who is a friend of the podcast who said, I get why Brian always calls him short Mike. <laughs> oh, see, I didn't hear this yeah. comment. This was behind the closed Wait, what do I call uh, yeah. him short Mike? You do. You, you, you call him short a lot. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 so. Yeah. He calls I think he's more Bruno than me, but I occasionally guy. jump in on That's, it. Yeah. 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 Says I'm the tallest guy he knows. Are you, you lying do. to me, Brian? Mike is the tallest man I know. Yes. Yes. hundred percent. And yes, I have stood gone, next yeah. to uh, Shaquille O'Neal when he was out clubbing. Oh, I bet that was fun. He pulled was up in a, he pulled up in a, 1985, 
Uh, no, it was, this was, um, this was early nineties. Mm. Who's uh who's Shaquille O'Neal? Oh, shut up. You millennial. <laughs> Get him out of here. I'm a, I'm a zoomer. I don't know. Haven't you seen, I don't know what a um, Shaquille is. Haven't you Super. seen, uh, Oh, I haven't heard that one. Uh, wait, wait, <laughs> sorry, Bruno for you. We're zoomer. talking about Shaq. Like Shaq food. You remember that love Shaq? Like the he's movie? Canadian. I'm gonna, I don't he's know. Canadian. <clears throat> Which is even worse. He <clears throat> helped invent basketball. <laughs> That's true. The fact that I'm Canadian actually discredits me even further because like they're 10 years behind the US, much like most right. countries. So they're just now watching sports games from like 2010. So <laughs> oh wow. Uh, so so yeah, they probably missed a boat on that time too. Yeah. <laughs> Remind me to go to Canada and put some bets on some sports. Okay, we should do some sports betting and some Canada stuff. Ooh, yeah, you think like Nickelback yeah. is still popular in Canada? There's like, no, you know. Nickelback was never popular. Come on, nah, Nickelback okay. is uh, amazing. Apparently, okay, apparently Nickelback is actually it, at least at one point during my marriage um, was still popular in like Nebraska and like, would it be context to say time. like, look at this photo. <laughs> <laughs> Back See, sorry, I think I think I screwed Anything everything up. I'm, I'm pretty being sure popular in Nebraska means that it's not popular. Yes, yeah. Nebraska doesn't know what's sorry, going Nebraska. on. Sorry, Nebraska. What are metrics I, I, like in Nebraska? I think oh, I've side, North side, North side, side railed us okay. and screwed everything up, and it's supposed to be Kelly's corner. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the do rail on that. Was my fault. <sighs> okay, so um, I only have one, and I'm. I, I kind of feel like I need to apologize for this in advance, but it was so weird and and gross, but topical at the same time. We've been talking a lot about um, NFTs and the blockchain, and we've also been talking a lot about TikTok um, in the through the course of 2022, 2021. Um, and <laughs> ran into this article that was, I, I, I need to say, Somebody else sent it to me and was like, this would be great for your podcast. Did you say you, um, need to send them, you need to say that or that you feel like you should say that? I feel like, like I should say that because I don't want you guys to think that I am. I mean, I guess I don't really care, but also I am reading it or parts of it on this. But it was just so fucking weird. Um, okay. Did you guys know who Stephanie Motto is? Yeah, so nope. I don't watch reality television. I didn't know who she was. Wait, is this the girl from 90 Day Fiance? <gasps> oh, yeah. her. Yes. Oh, yes, the one. In, oh, God, why do I know this? <laughs> why do I know this? <laughs> say it, say it. Oh, my God, say it, say I it. I know what it is. You don't want to say it, Mike? No, go ahead. I'm good. <laughs> I this don't is the credit of anything. Oh, shit. That's this that is that one. A, hey, oh, this I know is what a it very, is. Uh, she's an entrepreneur. Yeah, she is. Uh, um, she's an entrepreneur, yeah. all right. And I, honestly, I, cr- I there's so many creative ways that people are making money off of stuff like this now. I just mm-hmm. have to give them credit, even though it's like so stupid and messed up. Um, essentially, she um she sells farts, her <laughs> farts specifically, her farts yes. specifically. Yeah, so yep. so she she um, squeezes <laughs> these out. Apparently, they're popular, so she squeezed these out quite frequently. Yes. <sighs> so. Um, just to correct you slightly, Demirian, <laughs> she sold her farts. So she Ew. was selling right farts in a jar for a thousand dollars a piece. Yeah. She's like, she, yeah, she topped out farts. at fifty thousand dollars a week. Yeah. Fifty thousand dollars a week. I don't know if you guys obviously don't mm-hmm. watch. I know. I know Bruno watches Ninety Day Fiance, and I want to do the same thing that that he would probably say is initially it wasn't for me. That's it was her, for by my the way up on the screen. Other. Sure. But, okay. Okay. Guys. And then I started watching it, and I was like, "Man, this is just so garbage." I want to see what happens next. And <laughs> <laughs> but what I will say is, out of the all of the people that I don't like on that show and there's a lot of people especially with like the group she was in which is like the the single life now and the what was it the um before the or the seeking one whatever that one was but 
basically trying to find love. Like the night, it was the other way. Like she goes to the place that the person's at and tries to do whatever. Um, but anyway, out of all of those people, she's probably my least favorite. Sounds like like hey. a call girl. <laughs> like literally started when the first season that she was on, like she became such a piece of shit by the end of that season. I was like, wow, she's just a piece of shit. Uh, and then now they brought her back and then they like really tried to sexualize her, like, like put her on the front of the the cover and like, she's like following her with her friends and she's talking about her, her dry sex life. And I'm like, nobody cares. Like, yeah. I don't care. Well, apparently and she's, like, somebody does. Farting. I'm like, oh, my a lot God. of this care. Go. The, the, the only, the scary, only thing yeah. that Wait, we're not allowed to say that, are we? <laughs> oh, that's true. We're going to get canceled. That's it. Whoops. We're done here. I well, mean, then, if we don't get back, canceled after this article anyway. I mean, like, the, the only good thing that came of that lady from that show Fucking was... Bro, dude, the, your first day back. The person that she was seeing, <laughs> Erica, was actually pretty awesome. And Erica's yeah, family was, was like, really cool. super yeah. wholesome. She, like, yeah. yep. comes out to her parents, and her parents are like, We knew! <laughs> Yeah. We're cool Aww. with it, man. We love you no I matter what. That. And I was like, oh, there's a silver lining to this yes. terrible, terrible <laughs> set of people being together. Yeah. Now her her <clears throat> her girlfriend at the time was Erica was definitely pretty cool, but well, yeah. oh god. Unsurprisingly, this lady ended up selling farts. I'm happy for her. Oh. I'm happy that she made bank. I well, hope that she made enough to retire. Don't, they were so, very nice jars. <laughs> that I, I had a picture yes, of the jars. Nice jars. Yeah. Oh, um, right. You tell about the one she was holding in her hand, right? <clears throat> yeah so but um, so she actually was eating mm-hmm. such a high fiber diet that she almost killed herself she actually wound up in the hospital and the the <laughs> doctors are like she thought she was having a stroke actually um so wound up in the hospital and the doctors are like uh you're Diet is causing all of this pain, and it's no bueno. So, but Doc, I have to sell my farts. Exactly. How else will so, I fill my jars? Yes. So she said, um, "I mean, so it's she, supply and demand. You just you reduce the supply, the demand stays high, and you can sell them for more money. I mean, come on." Uh. Well. <laughs> Please no, tell I'll me listen. that's not the truth. Oh my no, god. No, she's so so. Being the entrepreneur that she is and taking advantage of all this other bullshit. Of all the people. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so rounding back to NFTs, she is now selling her farts as NFTs to quote the futurism.com article that I came across. Um, these NFTs, that <laughs> she says, these NFTs are just as beautiful, unique, and rare oh. as my actual poots. You can practically smell how delightful they are through the screen. Ugh. Ugh. So, and with that note, uh, let's uh, talk about. Let me tell you how much they're selling for. I, le- oh they're, th- I will say they're not selling for as much as um, the one day that you don't put the link of what you're talking about right, in the chat. I did it on purpose. The, I, did it on purpose. I know, right? and I'm I like, did, yeah, oh, God. I love it's. Yeah. It's like it's like. Got our attention reacts. <laughs> that's and that's why I did it. Um, okay, so she's attention. she's selling five thousand fart jar NFTs. Words I never thought I would say in my life. NFT I also NFTs I also already think are just fucking ridiculous. But yeah. five thousand <clears throat> fart jar NFTs. <clears throat> this is how I know it's not going to last. Um, they're selling for 0.05 ether, or according to this uh, futurism.com article, roughly $190 in ex- the current exchange rate as it is of when they were right. Running. Wow. She talked to somebody. She's like, hey, we could we could take this. There's idiots on the internet, right? Yeah. They're going to buy your farts, but they're going to buy NFTs, right? So well, then it's like, you don't even have to produce them, really. The and thing then is, we're going to do Ethereum. So that way they have to pay for it in a, in a currency that could potentially make you a lot of money eventually. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh the, well, what kills me is there are, there are people that I really respect that are trying to capitalize on this NFT thing, too. And I mean, sure. Uh, I was listening to another podcast with 
um, Rob McElhaney, and he was mentioning that he's looking into getting into NFTs and selling NFTs. And I was just like, oh. <clears throat> I mean, it's lucrative if you're in the right space. Uh, mm-hmm. Savannah right. and I looked into it from suggestions mm-hmm. um, and she acquired with her community. And uh, one of them literally said, if you do this, I'll actually skin you alive. So. <gasps> well, we, we did not do it. it. Words to to take uh, seriously. I I think considering one of them showed up at our house. Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. So uh, that's not that's also no point. Yeah, I probably shouldn't <laughs> do that. But no, I mean, you know, there's it, it, there's Wait, all kinds of things no. that people it's a sucker you born every minute. Should sort not of thing. do it. There's no probably before it. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying that, like, there's always something that people are going to buy. Regardless yeah. of like mm-hmm. people who flip items, like you basically buy the same thing for five dollars and you sell it for a thousand and people buy it. Like, yeah, you're stupid for buying the thing that's a thousand dollars, but I mean the guy who just made, you know, nine hundred something dollars is like whatever, you bought it. <laughs> so yeah. I mean uh, whatever. Um mm. yeah. can we move on? Ugh. Yes. Absolutely. You know what really grinds my gears. <laughs> You know what really grinds my gears? <laughs> like, oh my I do an awful, awful Peter. Well, <laughs> okay, so let, let's move on to looking back over the last yes. year. And a couple of us came up with a couple questions, kind of similar to what we do when our seasons change sometime in June, I think it is. And wanted to start off with everyone's favorite game that favorite game that they kind of played in 2021 doesn't have to be from 2021, but. Oh, well, that changes things. Uh oh. <laughs> well, it can be if you want it. It's, it's up to how you interpret it. It's Ooh. fine. We don't need 15 more games on your list. That's yeah. Oh <laughs> my God. One more. Uh, oh God. <laughs> that's fine. It's his I favorite have... as in the, the top one. <laughs> top, so top numero uno. Hundred. If you will. It's hard, man. You know, it's not that hard. You just choose the one that you like the most. All right, you want me to go first? Summer sure. fifty eight. Sure. I already know. I already know. I already know. It's summer fifty eight. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that one didn't make the list. <laughs> no. For those of you no, listening, no. just real quick, summer fifty eight was one of the games that I picked for Mike to play during Shocktober, and he was like. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> and it was a—it's a fantastic I mean, game. If you great experience, game. shout yeah. out to the devs, but not my favorite. So favorite means so Mike, I have to like it. So, so it's apparently, since you have a list, is this an ordered list, or is this just uh, unordered? It'll be ordered when I say it to you guys. Just then say the first one and then forget the rest of them. Okay, so <laughs> I guess I'll drop that one off. I'll move that one to the next category. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making progress. Um, oh my god! I can't, I can't believe this is this. Yeah, I guess that it turned I out this interesting. That one too. I can move that one too. Oh god! So, hey, Bruno, nice. how about you go while he's doing stuff? Unfortunately, I have one, but the most played games is going to be a lot longer. <laughs> oh god! Just, how is that so, possible? Your there's most only one game, game the one with played the most, the most. hours. So. He did not understand the assignment. No. (laughs) No, he did not. It's hard, man. Like, I play games for like a week and a half and I'm done. So, like, for me to say my favorite game, it's hard. But I Okay, so, Bruno, favorite game game, that you played during 2021. Let let, let him finish. We've already been here long (laughs) enough. The game that I played, it wasn't from 2021. Good. Since (laughs) now we changed the rules. There was no changing the rules. I'm going to say Firewatch. Oh, so, great choice. Yeah. So Firewatch released in like 2015 or 2016. Uh, it was available on Xbox Game Pass. I think it still may be. Um, mm, and if I not, you can pick it up for probably like 20 bucks or something. I don't know. Uh, 15 bucks, 20 bucks. Uh, but favorite game, definitely. It, it had the to me one of the most compelling stories, uh, most uh, down to earth sort of stories and the character decisions you can make. Because uh, your characters, you know, interacting with like your boss, like the Delilah that you're interacting with, and and even some of the, and I think I mentioned this before, is like some of the, the outputs, like the things you select. Typically, some games, like you select something, and you're like, 
oh, that's not what I meant by thank you. And it's like, yeah, well, you know what? You suck. Thank you. And you're like, no, no, I wanted to be nice. Like you didn't. (laughs) Um, but this game did a really good job of whatever you selected it, it actually being something similar or even better than what you were looking for. So um, it was a really cool game, very neat art style, very, like I said, the, the story of it was very compelling. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It only com- I completed it in like five hours, but you can definitely take your time and really like explore everything. Uh, and there's even a mode where you can just kind of go back and sandbox it and just kind of run around and just explore because uh, there's a lot of little tidbits everywhere. So I'd have to say it's probably my favorite game um, that I played last year. Um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Cool. Okay. Or no. Oh, yeah. it's, it's coming yeah. over to me now? Yeah. Talk sure. Oh, well, man, how do I choose from all of these different games, though? There's just so think when they didn't delete your character. Many. Actually, funny <laughs> enough. Mike, we say this bit. Um, Outriders is... I'd say my favorite game of oh wow what oh my god, wow, oh my god. Like Dark Souls this, so much if this if had you'd been... rather play a game that deletes your character so you could just be uh, in so much pain he he didn't this say that he like... wanted to play it now and and he uh, isn't a fan of the developers and how they screwed shit up but he oh. when he was playing that game he did love it he talked I about think, it a lot yeah. I think hour for hour of all the games I played in 2021 Outriders by far had the most enjoyment out of all the games. It, it is a lot of fun when everything works. The problem is everything doesn't work very often. It's like, <laughs> it's like living. It's, it's like you bought a house and for a brief moment, the house is perfect. All the appliances run, the heating is running. It's nice. It's great. You're having a good time inside of the house. But the majority of the time, something's broken. And a lot of the time, everything's broken. And then at some point, the person who sold you the house comes along and burns the house to the ground. And they go, whoops, I burned your house to the ground, but I'll build you a new one. But then they build it and they leave all anything the appliances. That's on the inside. Yeah, all the appliances are gone. And they're like, but you have a house. And I'm like, but this isn't the house that I bought. It's like a new house, but you gutted everything from inside of it. And the other house was already new. You just, you just took everything away from me. This is the epic been- analogy. <laughs> It's it's frustrating, but also it, I had a lot of enjoyment when I was playing it. And I, also, they're one of the companies that I I do think they're going to work hard at remedying that. They've already released a lot of things. They've added some of the appliances back, and they were upgraded versions. <laughs> um, <laughs> and really they're adding so a whole like another floor this year, from what they've said. So I'm like, oh, yeah. Hey. Uh, Cool. Yeah. Wow. And, and it's, and it is available on game pass. So I'm probably going to have to install it and play around with it again. Yeah. Kelly, I really want to hear yours. Cause I, I have, I, a, I have a good feeling. Um, we may have a similar, um, idea about. Oh game. God. If this, if I think I know what Brian's is, <laughs> I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> Oh my god. Operation Tango was my favorite game of the year. Same here. Uh, I almost yep. said, let's say it together. Oh, One, two, I three. About to, I, I was have about done to do that. Oh, good. That would have been amazing. Mike, if Mike had have talked, I probably would have done it, but yeah, he ruined it. <laughs> it's no, yes. that's not the game, game I thought you were going to say, so that's better oh. than I expected. No, it's definitely my favorite okay. game. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's the, the mechanics were so interesting in it. So interesting. Um, the the ability like it's got limited replayability sure yeah. but but you can at least play the whole thing through twice because you can play it on the other side which yeah. is completely different looking than the yeah. side you played before and um, and playing with other people i can see how it would it'll be different too so mm-hmm. but it's fun to be like no 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 wait and and then me messing up a lot was also hysterical because i start messing up and <laughs> Ryan's like, no, wait, no, 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 go, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay, this time, go here, go, go, no, 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 oh, okay, okay, let's try again, and then I start messing up so more, it, because, because I am dying laughing, uh, and now I just think it's hysterical, but I'm trying oh, at the same time, oh my gosh, if you have not played well, Operation then, Tango, it is so good. It was even more fun, because th- there were times where you mm. legit were like, I can't do this. I can't. Well, let's yep. just switch sides. I can't do this. And I yep. was like, no, nope. <laughs> nope. Take a breath. Yeah. We we were really close that time. Yeah. And and then we would nail it. We would nail, nail it. it. 
Because there were so many things where we had to do things in tandem Mm -hmm. that were just not natural to do. And it just, it, you know, we, we figured out a way to do it and it worked. And I I think, I think where, why it falls on my favorite game is because we just haven't been able to play it as much as I would have liked. Yeah. And I found out they have DLC for it. (gasps) They have an update. Oh, sweet. Cool. So. (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh. So once my kids go back to school. Yep. <laughs> That's a funny joke. Now that uh, is favorite game, which is a little bit different from the next one, mm-hmm. which is what game did we play the most, which might be the same for some of us, but could be different. Mm-hmm. Now for me, it's very different. My favorite game by far was Ap- Operation Tango. The, my most played game by far, which actually surprised me by the end of the year in many ways, because I, I mean, I, I would expect me to play Destiny 2, play a lot of WoW, uh, it, Halo even, but Halo came out so late that probably wouldn't have made it. But it was Fortnite, and I got into uh, it as a lark, as a joke, to like see this Ariana Grande concert, concert, more of an experience. Um and just really had a blast playing it. So I've played it quite a bit. I, um, every time I get on discord, um, I, I see, and it's usually, you know, in the evenings, I always see, uh, Phoenix Nova is playing Fortnite. I'm like, Oh <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I just jump in and do my dailies and then I'm out. Mm-hmm. And other times I'm like, Oh, I got a couple more missions to do, or I'm feeling hot streak and like get a couple wins. And I don't know. Just yeah. and they've changed it up a lot. So that's awesome. Wait, what about you? Oh, Bruno. Oh. We'll go to you. <laughs> Bruno. <laughs> uh I guess most played game according to Steam is a uh, New World. So really. Hold on. Uh, really quick. Before you say that, do you play anything from Xbox? Because the thing is it's I, I had to do the same thing. I had to go through each launcher and try to figure out like how long I've been playing stuff. Cause since I've been playing a lot of Game Pass, it's hard to like say like Steam is the only way to look at it. So I mean, I do play stuff from Xbox, but I can tell you that I've definitely not played anything on Xbox for 320 hours this year. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Also, that, one. <laughs> also that 320 hours comes with a small asterisk <laughs> to yeah, the upper right. I'd say like 90 to 100 hours are probably FK time because MMORPG. <laughs> so, yeah. Or, sure. or, Sitting there like a good 40 of those like 100 hours or me like spamming LFG putting groups together because there's no LFG tool. So yeah. well, I become with the that, tool. So I'm like, is there a separate entry for the demo or like the early access portion? Because I know some games are like that too on Steam. Like they don't really count the full game with the other game. So like you have more hours maybe. Because I know you uh, played that early access too, didn't you? I didn't play it this year no i played the the first one like in 2020 and so that was when i was it. like yo this game is actually booty and everyone was like yep and you're like this is not sea of thieves and Weird. not the good booty yeah no <laughs> bad booty bad booty but yeah like there, new there's no song. pleasant smelling farts here oh my god cool is that it? That's it. That's I mean, it's it's not my most played game, not my most played games, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, here we I, go. Oh crap! Mike's got a list. Fuck. No, um, I I do have a few, and I, as I looked at the list, I realized which ones actually. So I would say, so you guys know me. I don't play games mm. that long, so. If this was yeah. like 2018 Rocket League, obviously I'd have like so many hundreds of hours in Rocket League or whatever. But uh, this year, I'll have to say most played game, the runners up would runners be. Up. Oh my god! Uh, oh my god! Would be Fortnite, uh, New World, and I'd even throw in uh, Rocket League. I'll even throw in like Icarus because okay. I, I did play that for a good like when I was playing, I was playing it. Uh, but I have to say the number one game I played consistently has to be Cookie Clicker. Uh, <laughs> I, I was at that. 
179 days before my save crashed when I, well, I reformatted and made a Windows 11 machine. But anyway, uh, yeah, so Cookie Clicker was probably the, the most thing that I had running consistently and constantly checking on uh, for the whole time. So I, I would say that has to be my most played game. Yeah. Nice. Um, so for me, um, my most played game, I actually played uh, before I joined the podcast in 2021. And it's not a new game, um, but I used to play it for a little bit after work. Uh, it's called East Shade. I think I talked about it a little bit. Um, I played it through Xbox Game Pass. Um, it is, you are this foreign person um on this island is shipwreck and you're a painter and you have to earn money to support yourself on this island and like do missions um but there's an eclipse that happens twice a day and there's just no urgency the music is really beautiful it was a relaxing game for me it wasn't like a you know first person shooter where i was like trying to get stuff done or I have a mission. I need to get this done fast and everybody's waiting on me and I can't do this until I do that. And um, so East shade is a, if you're looking for something that's like really calm and sweet and like relaxing um, and I had a really stressful job uh, that was, it was perfect. So I had actually spent, I, I was surprised to see that I'd done that. I'd spent more time on that and that was through my console, but I do want to just make a quick note. My second most played game. Ah, see, see, other people have other things. Yeah. My second most played game. You started a trend. It's your fault. Phasmophobia yeah. with you guys. A trendsetter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Phasmo. You know, it's a lot of Phasmo. Um, and not to discredit it, like mm. we at last year when we had the same thing, uh, Phasmo basically swept the floor on pretty much every category for all of us because we were like, "Yep, this game. Yep, this category. Yep," and it was just. And we try. I try. I tried personally to not list it, uh, but I haven't also played it as much as I did back then. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I could see why that would be on your list because it's mm -hmm. it is a very addictive game when it comes yeah. to you know scary and having fun with your friends. Boy, if we had uh, the game you changed, you turned your attitude around the most on. <laughs> it would be phasmophobia, <laughs> and it, it was well, hilarious too because. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, this, like the controls are crap. It's, it's so imprecise. It's yeah. such a piece. And like, and then we introduced yes. Bruno to it. And Bruno said the exact same phrases I said in almost and in the even same left order. The truck yet. You were still in the truck. Like, <laughs> yeah. <He> was... <laughs> I mean, I stand by the fact that phasmophobia is like, I mean, I don't know about now. When we first started playing, it was a clunky piece of shit. Like the controls is. are just are just it's still fucking, pretty clunky still. The controls it's are just really fucking clunky. miserable, but yeah, it is one person. So I'll let it slide. Not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, now it's, so it's not, it's, now the, the, game, the game is executed in the sense of how the game plays out very well. It's just it's like Bethesda <laughs> development on crack. So they're, they're like as as clunky and as many bugs as we can pack into one place. We're going to do it. So I just, it's like the, the second I picked up a flashlight or tried to, I was like, what yeah. is this ass but of a game? It actually plays a lot better than some AAA games that I've tried to play. And I say try. So. Which is like sad. what? I don't know. Maybe the one that we always talk <sighs> about. No, oh, used no, to. no, 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 cyber cyberpunk 2077 was pretty bad at first, was pretty bad <laughs> at first but let's, let's, let's be honest yeah. from a, a, a bug slash from a clunkiness standpoint, it was not as clunky. It just was a much larger game, which gave it a lot more room for broken stuff. But if we're talking per scenario that a bug can be introduced, phasmophobia was leading in clunkiness and bugginess. <clears throat> just That's true. That's they didn't just have like the manpower opinion, man. That's just in my opinion, man. <laughs> Only difference is for them, it wasn't excusable because they had like a multi-hundred person development team versus one person. Yeah. Imagine what they could have done if they had the developers and time that Phasmo. Mm. <laughs> Imagine if they had the time of one developer. 
Does anybody else anyway. hear crickets chirping? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> All right. What you got next for us, Phoenix? <gasps> sure. Best. This is for pretty much mm-hmm. games that came out at 2021. And just what you thought maybe was the game, uh, a best new feature that showed up in a game or an add on for a game or maybe a best new mechanic in a game. Uh, Something that just caught your eye. Just this one part about this game kind of caught your eye and you're like, oh, it's I like that's neat. That's that's really cool what they did there. Bruno. Um. That's not even really a specific mechanic. It's kind of just the way the game works in general, but uh, taking roguelike games to a whole new level with Returnal, they, I think they just really knocked it out of the park. They took a genre, which I guess I think they still label it as like an action RPG, but they took a genre that is like primarily like an indie title genre or at least like a 2.5D or 2D game and they were like, what if we like really invested in this model and built out on it and the execution of the game mechanic and how it worked throughout the world that they developed was. I think as flawless as you could probably make a roguelike. Realistically, in that setting, I don't think you could actually have done that base function any better than they did. Um, and if somebody wants to argue that you're an idiot, so what do I care? <laughs> <laughs> Your opinion's invalid. You can return it. <clears throat> well, so I receipt still. Hmm. <laughs> I would say best new feature mechanic add on. I have a list, so I have three. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, there's there's three specific ones. Um, the first one. Well, I'll say is from 12 minutes. So 12 minutes was a game based on like literally 12 minutes and you Uh, have to try to figure out the story. Uh, And each time that you made the wrong choice, uh, you would start over in the room and the whole life, like your groundhog day would begin again. Uh, so to me, that was start pretty over neat was because... the pleasant part of that. The, with yeah. the, <laughs> the part before the start over was usually less than pleasant. Yeah. yeah. So like, that's true having to go through each different scenario and basically from what I, from what I played, of course I didn't finish it because I don't finish games, but uh, going through the scenarios that I did go through, uh, it definitely seemed like everything was already pretty much there, except you just didn't have knowledge of it. So like the certain questions you wouldn't ask because you didn't know, but the next time you would, and it's like you had the same, same path to get there. You just didn't know you could do this yet. And I don't know. It was just, it was a really interesting way to, to kind of, put a game into like groundhog that loop of just playing over and over uh, and not to mention it was top down, which is also something you don't typically see with more of like a realistic style game. So uh, it was pretty neat. I, I enjoyed that one a lot. Uh, the second one going to um, my building type S kind of games. Cause I do that all the time. Like I play all these games that build and I craft and I do all these things and the same, it's the same loop pretty much in every game. Like it's, you know, you get the items, you build the items, you have to make the crafting table and then you do this and that and you keep building, keep building. Um, but I will say the survivalist. So survivalist was a, uh, like a little cute, like, um, like isometric 2d game or whatever, uh, that you get to play and you're like stranded on an Island and you have, uh, and you find a monkey <laughs> and this little monkey follows you. And, and as you keep playing, you, you discover more monkeys, more monkeys, like you just keep saving them from these different dungeons and stuff. Um, but the whole mechanics there, you, you know, you craft, you food, you do all the stuff. But what was really neat was that the monkeys, you have the ability to automate them. So you can like basically use like the banana and you would toss it to them and you show them what you want to do. So you're like, Hey, I'm going to chop a tree down. So you, you send them the banana and say, Hey, pay attention to me. you start chopping a tree and then it automatically goes, Oh, cool. Give me an ax and I'll go chop a tree. And he'll just start chopping a tree. Uh, and that's cool. Like you can gather resources a lot quicker that way until you get to the point where you realize that you can actually start chaining these together. So you can really start you automating your, your monkeys you can, together. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't chain your monkeys together. It's like monkeys in a barrel. They all just kind of lock arms. Right. Um, that but just sounds like Peter is uh, coming after you. I'm just saying. <laughs> right? Well, to the point where like you'd have one chopping a tree, and you would teach the other two to deliver to a certain point. Well, then you'd have one going to that point to pick up items, and then the other one would go to the crafting table to deliver items to the crafting table, and then there'd be a monkey at the crafting table crafting the items you wanted to have. And then if you had more, you could keep sending them somewhere else. And so it was really neat to to kind of take the whole 
automation process of a game. Hold on one but second. Like, I'm sorry. Every time you say crafting at a table, all I think about are like these little monkeys, like making Christmas ornaments. And, like that's what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Santa it, it was just sorry. a really neat way to kind of introduce the crafting into a game, but also like have automation in a sense too. So like you didn't have to do that. They could just be like, you know, following you around and protecting you. But like, it was really cool to do that. So I thought that was a pretty cool mechanic. And then the last one uh, was kind of talk- talking about what you talked about earlier with Fortnite with the concerts, which that's not new. Um, but one of the experiences we did do was the MLK experience and the Martin Luther King experience. where We actually got to drop in and go through, you know, Washington, D.C., essentially, and go through all these different like uh, memorials about different parts of his um, his influence life, in career in life, you know, uh, and it was really cool. Like it, it to me, it was really awesome, not just because I got to experience it, but also knowing that as a developer and they know they have small kids, you know, playing this game, that they're introducing history into that, too, which was really cool to see that, you know, they're not only just playing a game to to make a lot of money, but they're also trying to reach back out of the community and show like, hey, here's history. Here's things that you may not learn because some things get lost um, and some, some people tell it different ways and whatever. Um, but at least that way they were able to experience it in a little way that they they're used to doing it. So and maybe maybe they, they retain it a little easier because it's you know, it's the video game they're used to playing. So uh, yeah, it was, was, it was interesting with, um, you know, like was this the best, you know, edutainment in the world or, or what, was this the best way to do the message or, or was it the classiest way to, to present this? No, but right. it wasn't meant to be either. And the, the other thing about it too, is people, people were like poo pooing it all over the place, just saying, Oh, you know, like it was disrespectful. Blah, blah. You know, they had all these games and stuff. And I was like, well, yeah, but did you go and, play some of the games yeah. cuz some of them were trivia about what happened and yeah. were teaching you stuff and and like they were they were reinforcing the points and the entire time you get to hear the I have a dream speech and uh and people would come back because there was incent it was incentivized to come back to do certain things and be able to earn earn some things so and you could hear the speech wherever you were so it's very prevalent in your ears and you, I don't care if you were half paying attention, you Mm -hmm. still picked up a lot of stuff on that. And so I think the people who were shit talking this, um, like I'm not going to say they're wrong, but they didn't, they, they seemed to look at the surface level of it and not like the surface level. And they didn't dive any deeper than that. I'm not saying they would have thought it was the best thing in the world, but maybe they wouldn't have uh, disliked it so much. Well, Kelly, do you got one for your... this? Um, oh, I sorry. Actually, I, I do, but I was going to ask you first. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Um, so uh, I've talked a little bit about a game called Monkage, which is, um, <laughs> it's a like three dimensional. Is that the proper block. pronunciation? Do we know? I have Monkage. still no idea. They, is, is it Monkage or? It's Monkage. Monkage. Oh, thank you. Because yeah. I, messaged them and they never responded back. Wait, are you so, the developer, yeah. Brian? <clears throat> what? Huh? Yeah. Wait. It no, looked like Moncage to me, but I was like, maybe I'm overthinking this. And anyway, um, so it's a 3D, it's a, it's a cube, right? But each um, section of the cube is, has a different, I'll say scenario. And you have to um, match up something over here that has a train track with something on this one that has a pattern on uh, a fence that just happens to also kind of look like the train track. And if once you match up the cube, once you match up the perspectives of the cube, the train will go from here and go into here and then continue with part of the story. Go to to one face of the cube to the other face of the cube, which are different pictures and, yeah. Uh, it's so funny because actually, um, uh, see, I had a list uh-huh. of best <laughs> mechanic or, <laughs> and the, my first one on that list was the, the three dimensional lining up of the different faces of the cube with different, um, pictures on it, mm-hmm. uh, in Mongage. 
So that that's funny. Okay. Yeah, we, okay. we mentioned that one. <laughs> Next year, we won't talk ahead of time and figure. <laughs> However, I did have a second one. Okay, good. Because good. I, because <laughs> I, I also I, I, I'll see Bruno. See where you're at. Where, everybody has a list. Everybody <laughs> has a list. Uh, so I've been waiting for this moment until Mike realized I had a list too. Um, I I put that one down first because I thought it was such an innovative way of like yeah. these totally different pictures, and, but then they would kind of combine and then do something on the screen and change the pictures because of that. And then you would do other things. But I was like, ah, Kelly, Kelly really liked that. She's probably going to say it. So I better get a second one. (laughs) And, and unfortunately the second one that I thought of was actually the thing Kelly and I liked as well. And I went back to operation tango. Mm. Let me tell you why it wasn't like, like, believe me, the, the cool mechanics of, of, you know, the two different perspectives and having to talk to each other and, and you're on separate games, right? You're on separate monitors. That's all cool. And that's a very cool mechanic. But what really, what I thought was best was that they created this game that is required to be a two player game with two different perspectives, but only one person needs to buy it. Yes. Because, oh, yes. Because if you buy it, you can do a mm-hmm. friend code to the person who's going to play with you, and they literally get a full download of the game. They mm-hmm. just can only play when someone who has the full game plays. Uh, they can't start their own game. They can't. They can't start a game with someone else. Yeah. Uh, which I think that's such a cool mechanic. That's such a cool mm-hmm. feature that. It'd be really nice to see it because you see that you see a lot of these games are like four player asymmetric games. You know, that's been that's been having a resurgence come back. Right. Well, then you have to get four people together and four people have to buy the game. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think the developers are going to green light. One person buys the game and three other people get to play with them. Right. (laughs) But uh, at least on the on some of the two player games where it's required two player, I would like to see this friend code idea become a bit more prevalent because it's really cool. Yeah, that was very cool. Okay. So we have a lot of positivity. I I threw kind of a, not really a negative one in here because there could be some funny answers to this as well. Well, I only Um, have one answer for this one. Oh, is, is it, is it, is it what it, so so let's start with Mike for the worst oh, idea yeah. from a developer. Ready? Yes. NFTs. <laughs> Fuck. Period. I guess we're all oh well. I guess Bruno, no, save us. I don't <laughs> if I don't get all three of you on that one, then I don't know. <laughs> I'm indifferent uh, about NFTs. Mm. I mean, like it they're they're whatever i mean some of them are valid and hold value because people give them value and some of them don't have any value whatsoever well okay so to to clarify to clarify when i yeah when i talked about nfts it was how game developers are implementing them which is against a lot of things of what an nft is supposed to be decentralized um freely uh, you know, free commodity between people as opposed to the developers getting a cut every time that you sell it. Uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't bring anything new to the table. It's, it's the exact same model that has been used for years and years and years and years by other developers just with in-house databases. You, the NFT is part of it is completely a waste uh, and more so than actual, like actual NFTs, somebody finds value in it and somebody trades them. And yeah, there's, you know, this energy cost that is probably a very bad thing, but it's so much worse with these game NFTs when there's zero reason for them to ever, ever done it right. other than, it, than it being a buzzword. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess it depends also how they execute the NFT if they're yeah. selling like an NFT that's artwork of a game that they're releasing. Um, or if they're selling a virtual item that you can only have by owning the NFT, um, that also still technically works so long as it's embedded within a blockchain. And that's where the actual tie to the item and the ownership lives. But 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but you could still do NFTs that without are... the NFT. You could, you could, you could have people purchase items that you know that you have to have purchased the item to have it. You hmm. could even make them unique items if you wanted to, and you yes. wouldn't need an NFT for that. Own... You could, but it's just a different way to process it. Yeah, dude, farts in a jar. Yeah, the cost, <laughs> still, the cost is still going to be relatively the same. I don't know. It's just a different way to administer it. I think. I think well, overall, because no, the block, block really chain stupid. takes a lot more computational power. Is the problem? Whereas but, a database is just a database. Well, right, that's so the that thing was is, mine. Yeah. Uh, to, just to clarify, though, before we move on, depending on the type of NFT, because I've unfortunately had to do a lot of research in these stupid yeah. things. <laughs> a correct NFT is something Stupid. where its unique identification is hosted in an Ethereum blockchain or something of the sort. So it's directly tied and intertwined with that, and that is where it lives. A bullshit NFT is hosted in a hosted in a database somewhere where it's just a URL to a picture that mm. means nothing. You 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 literally bought nothing. It has no monetary value past the point that you paid money for it, and there's nothing to back it. Whereas a real NFT, it's like it, it takes sure. up space in a blockchain somewhere, meaning that it has to have value because now it's been forced to, unless the blockchain fails. Um, either <laughs> way, I think it's forced kind of to. useless. But um, yeah, that's a that's a good stupid thing to to throw out there that developers <laughs> have decided to do. Yeah. What is your? Uh, what do you think is the worst? developer i'm uh, gonna do too mike how's that sound oh my god see um because why not this is the best category to do to do two of these oh my god if any first of all if there's any category that bruno can do more than one yes and it's gonna be this one i bruno it's a good point i challenge you <clears throat> for three and go oh god but that's not even a challenge i, I, I could probably go. think of it but let me start with my first okay. two because they're very specific um the first one's going to be outriders um specifically i want to point out that the way that outriders and people oh, can fly god. executed their online multiplayer is probably one of the most idiotic presentations of online gameplay to ever i don't know disturb mankind as a whole um <laughs> they decided to make a non-live service game have live servers that all the players had to communicate with to download their characters. But in order to do this, they would have one person be the host of a peer-to-peer -peer lobby, but their connection has to route through a vendor that actually hosts and manages the connectivity and encrypts it for security reasons, but then has to communicate with their live servers. And then after all of that is done, what allows wrong? other players to peer-to-peer -peer <laughs> connect back to that original person, which is probably the most convoluted, stupid, asinine way that anybody has decided to do a multiplayer looter shooter game of all the <laughs> things in the world. And the result ended up being... <sighs> Tens of thousands of characters getting deleted because their dumbass online system made it so you'd be waiting for your character file to load <laughs> for like 10 seconds to two minutes. And God forbid you crashed in that time frame in between saving through that horrific chain of events. You would just lose all of your stuff. So that, <laughs> that definitely earns my stupid developer idea award uh, alongside <laughs> New World, a company that or Amazon Game Studios with New World, a company that is amazingly good at shooting itself in the face repeatedly. <laughs> they released a product that was not really complete, but had a lot of fun to it in a moderately okay state in terms of online play. And then as people started to get pissed off with all the problems in their game, they just compounded on it by bogging their game down with additional bullshit game development decisions like taking the end game watermark system, which this watermark system, you know what it is. Once you reach end game in New World, it unlocks the watermark system. So you have a gear score similar to how Destiny works. So you go out, you get pieces of gear, and every gear that you get increases your overall item score. And that lets your gear score that you get continue to go higher. It takes an astronomical amount of time to hit cap. So the only way that people found of a reliable way was you either do it the hard way or alternatively, you spend all of your money to buy high item level gear, which inflates 
your overall watermark score, allowing you to get better items. Well, right before Christmas, Amazon Game Studios decided that amidst their mass duplication exploits, crippling server issues from transfers, and balance problems, they were going to change the watermark system so that if you did own gear that you did not craft in order to artificially inflate your watermark score, it didn't count. And your gear actually got deleveled down to your character's bound watermark score, forcing you to level it up over time, which is probably one of the most ridiculous implementations of a gear system post-release in existence. You literally took something that people were okay with, but one of the only things people were moderately okay with, and you destroyed it overnight. And then you were like, we'll change it maybe eventually. Sorry, guys. And here we are. It's 2022. And the problems still exist. I'm dead. <laughs> and a third yeah, one. This is a great category. Who, can, oh, who can I throw in as a third one? I don't even. I'm just trying to think. Who else uh, is really Sony? Talking about Cyberpunk um, 2027. <laughs> uh, CD Projekt Red. Uh, you know what? Let's let, let's go into stupid ideas from developers. Okay. One that I mentioned. <laughs> it's not even necessarily game related. It is game related, and it's not. We're going to talk about Blizzard as a whole mm-hmm. in 2021. Yes, a company. Yes, yes. who's Idiocy as a developer transcends just code. It's 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 astronomical how they've managed to screw up in marketing, in general PR, development, game planning, the executive, uh, the executive and upper management, community mm-hmm. engagement, executive and upper management, employee treatment. These people in 2021 have managed to screw up every single facet of their company over and over again in in every way humanly possible disrespecting player time disrespecting their employees disrespecting brand new executives uh disrespecting the community as a whole the government government organizations that came after them for doing things that they weren't supposed to be doing throwing throwing another yeah and and the other one was like uh throwing another executive under the bus like blaming them for something you wrote yourself yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, li- like a company like, who who Chad knows also no says, uh, play, placing blame on everyone else. Yeah, exactly, well. exactly. Yes. I mean, like as a, as a, like a small side note, the guy who runs the show had a stupid letter written up that he had somebody else send out because she was a woman and he felt it would be better coming from her. It was tone deaf as hell, and he blamed her for it. And then mm. she quit, citing, "Well, actually, um, he wrote that, and I was just like." a token woman hired into that position. So uh, sucks to suck. That company's terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And here we are. So yeah, I guess um, Outriders, mm-hmm. dumb online stuff and New World's ridiculous development plans it still gets completely overshadowed, eclipsed, annihilated, just completely vaporized well, when it's set next to the absolute un- Deniable <laughs> clusterfuck that is Activision Blizzard. What is the worst AAA company of 2021? You know, out of all of the companies that were having these problems, Ubisoft was having these problems. Um, what's what's the Quantum one? Uh, that they, they they I know they were having problems. It was, Riot it's Games like the, has been having these issues for a long time. Riot as well. Games they just was settled my for third one. Yeah, one hundred million it's, dollars. There's a lot of companies doing this, but the problem well, with no, Blizzard was that they knew my, that. Yeah, but my point, but my point is, out of all the here. companies that were doing this, <laughs> and out of all yeah. the companies that were trying to keep unions out of <clears throat> the concept of game development, and I'm not saying positive or negative there, I'm just saying mm-hmm. that's what a lot of these companies were trying to do, that if unionization gets into game development, it's going to be because of Blizzard. Yeah, that they're if it happens, 100. they're going to be the genesis of it. Sorry, Mike, that yep. was I was just finishing. No, it's fine. I was just saying that they were just like out of all the companies over the past year that, you know, and this is not just because last year. This has been happening, right? Yeah. People are starting to talk yeah. about it now. Well, but yeah, like Blizzard, Blizzard been going being, on for 10 years, being, being <sighs> the, the, the one that most yeah. people would look at because they are the largest AAA studio that was having all these issues like they could have like tried to fix this pretty quickly because like, hey, we're pretty popular, probably don't want to do that. But they were just like, yeah, hold my beer. Like, let me show you how real bad it can get. And like, they would just keep doing things each week to like, let make me it worse. show you the, what's the right thing to do. OK, I'll do the cool. opposite. We're going to try every that. single time, every single time. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was just bad. 
I, no, especially since they did have this history that had been going on for 10 years or more. And they've always been known as the developer of like, uh, you know, good quality products for the most part. They, not everything was perfect. Uh, and, and they've made mistakes. Sure. But they were always like, it's done when it's done that we're, we're not going to, mm. we're not going to like rush things out. We're going to, it's going to be done when it's done. And they had this persona of, of being a, you know, this great place to work because of how this attitude was not realizing there was a CD underbelly that had been going on for a decade or more. Yeah. And then as things came out over the last year and a half that like Kelly said, each time something and like Bruno said, and kind of what Mike was saying too, is each time something came to light, they're like, let's see how we can fuck this up worse than anyone yeah. else. Let's how, how can we make this even worse? 10 years ago, when the gates of hell opened for the third time <laughs> and they were met by error 42 was the marking of the day that Activision Blizzard would descend literally <laughs> to the seventh circle of hell as a company. They just continued to trash themselves year after year. And any time they made a stride forward by fixing one of their games, they took another step back. And then they released Overwatch and everyone was like, is this it? Is this the light that we were all waiting for? And they were like, yo, but check out this terrible expansion we're releasing for World of Warcraft. And everyone was like, why though? And they were like, oh, and now we're oh, going to release. Now, now we're going to shut down the Collegiate League of Overwatch mid-season and, and literally put people out of jobs for almost zero reason. Yeah, well, I mean, right. everything they've done for the last at least what... Uh, at least the last good four years has been completely out of greed at this point. Once over once Overwatch launched and they started making so much money off of MTX, they were like, eh, let's just re-release old games and just uh Yeah. We'll just see when that runs out. And then when they were like, God, it's slowing <sighs> down, they were like, We'll release Overwatch 2. What's different about Overwatch 2? Nothing. It's the same engine, but we're adding a single player campaign. Oh. So you're gonna have to what? You're gonna have to just go into Overwatch 2 to do all the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll make more money off of it. Yeah. Blizzard in a nutshell. Kelly, Kelly, save us from this. Well, I'm done. I got nothing. Good. I got, I got, well, I got nothing. But I had NFTs and that was it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's funny. Three of us had NFTs. Uh, but I do have something else to talk about, which is the game that came out of nowhere for you. What is the game that most came out of like left field? I feel like Mike and I are going to agree wholly on this. I mean, of all the of all the games that surprised me, this game legitimately appeared out of the fog of yeah, nothing. Like I, I got a message from a friend and said, hey, this looks like a cool game. Like the day before uh, it released. Yeah. Early actions and, or whatever. And uh, I was like, oh, this is the one, two, three moment. It, did I, yeah. Did I, I think I showed you or something. I was like, hey, check this out. I'm like, what the hell? Like, this is yeah, cool. it's just it, it's Valheim. A hundred percent. That is the game that came out of nowhere. There was no there was no marketing for it whatsoever. It was like legit. It just appeared on Steam one day as release and everyone was like, what is this? It was like the trailer that I saw, I saw two trailers for it because I went to their page and I watched both trailers. And the first trailer was like, show me gameplay. I was like, "Okay, this looks kind of cool. And the second one sold me because it starts off with like death metal. And I'm like, oh, shit. I what we got going (laughs) here. Like, and it was just. Yeah. And I mean, you can keep talking, but man, it's what a game. Yeah, I mean, there's there's really not a lot to say. I mean, it's a survival game that just really handled itself well. It came out of nowhere. They didn't do any marketing for anything. Its marketing came from streamers and just from the game being pretty well thought out. They just yeah. released a good product. People picked the product up and then the communities did the rest. That was it. The communities and the, the rating scores across the board, what people were saying about it, sold the game to millions of people. Yeah, and the game definitely hit a lot of the game awards, like for Steam and from the video game awards and everything. I've seen Valheim everywhere. But what speaks to me is obviously these are the kind of games I'm into. And 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 it, what it was also interesting about this game is that I got Phoenix and I got Demurin into these games, like into this game specifically, yeah. because Demurin is like into like the Dark Souls, the harder games, which this game had a lot of aspects of like playing and really having to be careful with combat because you can die pretty quickly, which I didn't get into that because I just kept building. Um, but to get, I, Phoenix well, I remember into this you game. Yeah, was I, a lot I remember different. you got me into it and 
like, I don't know, it was a week later, you like came in and joined me and you're like, what the hell? What, what, what the, you're breeding pigs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this is how you do it. Let me show you how to do it. And I'm like, well, yeah, initially you were I, like, Oh God, this game, here we go. Another builder game, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And I'm like, I, it's fine. I though. think, come on. <laughs> one of the things I saw online relatively recently, in fact, I thought was just a very true statement about this game. It's, it's almost like it's, I, I don't want to sound derisive when I say this because uh, I can't remember the original verbiage. This is the only thing I think of, but it's almost like Minecraft for grownups. Not saying it's Minecraft good. can't be for grownups, but I'm just saying it's yeah. it's almost like it's As that next level play, up of Minecraft. For yeah. grown up. <laughs> yeah. I'd agree with that. Um, so interestingly the enough. Building, the building engine in it is pretty amazing. Yeah takes a little getting used to, but it's pretty amazing. So I knew that Bruno would say that was the game. Uh, and I agree, like wholeheartedly, I would I would agree. Um, so I also had another one because obviously I had to have a list. So the second <laughs> game that kind of got me out of nowhere, and this did release last year. Um, it's available on Xbox Game Pass, or it was, I don't know if it still is. It's called Next Space Rebels. And to me, what an interesting game. Yeah, I, if you don't remember talking about it, it's basically a, a, a person on uh, I can't remember what it's called now, but like YouTube, essentially, that's a like a content creator who creates like model rockets and does like the most outlandish things, like makes like large model rockets that can like probably go into some tens of thousands of feet up. And, and sometimes out of know, like strange uh, things too, yeah, it's, like a it's, bike or something like torn apart. And and that she's known, she's a content creator, she's known, and she makes a contest about you know you too can be like me, you know, make something crazy and record it. And uh, so you literally start the game, and like the game has a browser that looks like YouTube, and it's like you have your own page and your own followers, which you don't have anybody at first, and. And then you go to your little place to like sketch up a rocket and you have like the basic model kits, like literally just the rocket, like the little cartridge and like, that's it. And, and then people, and you have like your phone, like a chat, like you have your text messages, people text you and you have conversations with all these random people that it's like, Hey, can you use this in your next video? And you publish these, so you, you film it, it looks real. Like you're actually launching this rocket that looks real. Like the footage looks like it's actual real footage. And you launch it, and if it succeeds, like you can actually clip it, and then basically just like an upload on YouTube, have your description, your tags, and all this stuff, and then you submit it, and then people it tells you afterwards like how popular it was, and and then you start getting subscribers and likes and all this different stuff, and to the point where people start sending you things like here, just use this, use this, and then it just it keeps expanding from there until you start like building actual rockets, and it's it was such a weird like out of the blue game that I played it was um, really, and it was really, really cool. cool. Really? I cool. just, I really enjoyed it. It was something out of nowhere, very different than anything else that I've really played. Uh, and it really made me feel like I was living this alternate life of like this weird reality of like model rockets <laughs> and stuff. It was, it was interesting. It was cool. Very cool. Yeah. Kelly, you got one. I do <laughs> mine. It's it's for me. It was an out of nowhere game, but, it should have very clearly been expected. <laughs> the crab game. So for, for those of you who don't know, the crab game is like the actual digital version of the squid game. And it was a lot of fun. We all played it one night. I think um, Dicey had been playing it for a while. And so we all got together and played it one oh, no, night. No, and I played it with you guys the same night. That was that was it. Who, who was it? Mm -hmm. Was it was it? Brian, were you I, the first I one knew play? about it before then, but okay. I think I waited until we got together okay. before I actually played it. But yeah. I knew about it, yes. Yeah. Okay. It was it just reminded me just, of older games, but like yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, oh yeah. It's definitely not like high quality, but it was hysterical to to that the, they somebody like Hilarious. jumped on that bandwagon really freaking fast. And it was like, oh, okay, yeah, I should have expected they, this, but I was like, it, it had some jank, game? but <laughs> it, it, it had a lot more variety in the games yeah. than I thought it would, which was pretty cool. I mean, they could have mm. just like 
done that was some built basics. On Gary's mod, right? uh, I, I don't right. know. Actually, I, I don't know right. for a fact. Uh, it, was Gary's but, modder, so uh, it definitely felt like very early. Um, it might have been. Like I think Source I remember engine that. or yeah. like something like that, because it, it Gosh, definitely felt like, you know, freaking playing Counter Strike or something like it was weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gary's mod. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually for, curious yeah. if it's still popular. <laughs> uh, yeah. So and, and the only problem was like they were clearly like hackers and uh, the, people were doing stuff that people were like, sketch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or or people take exploiting some bugs. There were some people yeah. exploiting some bugs to like stay floating in the air, especially like on the floor yes. lava type games. Oh, and, right. And they were yeah. like, just do this. And I was like, yeah, then. Ha- ha- but how? Like, And he was like, just do this. And I was like. I, I hear you. You hear me. You're not giving me any information, 15 year old. <laughs> oh, he wasn't 15, Kelly. <laughs> he was probably younger than that. Yeah. He was much younger than that. <laughs> yeah. But no, it was, that was really fun. That what was, about you, Brian? The, the one that really hit me out of nowhere and also was kind of in a genre that I'm not as much of a fan of. So it kind of double hit me out of nowhere because it was yeah. like this thing that like, normally I wouldn't like this game. Also, it was one of the first games after we had changed the format for game of the moment where we did much, m- much more demonstration. And it was also, I think the first time that people bought the game as I was demonstrating it. And that's Loop Hero. <laughs> Just for the and, record, I've been shaking my head because I was waiting for you to say Boyfriend Dungeon this whole time. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 because no, because like, Loop like you, you and Bruno bought it game while watch. I was. Oh. Yeah, no, that was that was fun. I'm surprised. Actually, yeah, it was, I'm surprised it came out this like we've this is the first person who said yeah. something about it. Yeah, yeah, it was like it was. I uh, I actually like that game so much that I bought it on Switch for when I was traveling. Oh, there what? we go. So you bought it twice, kind of. I bought it twice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 so yeah. interesting because it it takes mm. some concepts of a roguelite where you have to restart your run and you build progression over time that you can maintain through runs and then you can go further into runs because of that going forward. There's that. There's some card mechanics where you're pl- where you're getting cards dealt mm. out, um, and and you have to use them otherwise they fall off in the end, which can uh, be negative, uh, a little bit of positive. But so you're you're trying to play them and playing the cards can like make things more difficult, but more difficult means more rewards, and so there's this balance, and there's also as you do certain things with the cards gets you towards the end of that particular run, which doesn't uh, the run that isn't making you start all over, but the continuation to the next level type thing. Uh, And it's all done in this weird loop where you don't control what your person does going around the loop. He just goes around the loop and he fights, right? And you don't even control the fights, but you control the environment around him with the cards and with a couple other things with the equipment that you equip on your, your, your player, uh, you know, your character going around, I should say it's really neat and innovative. And I basically, I just heard about it one day and I did for those of you that cannot figure out what the hell I'm talking about. I was the (laughs) same way when I first heard about it. And yep. then I saw some videos of it and I downloaded it and I was like, this is fucking fun. Yep. Agreed. I would, uh, I would agree with that. I, and I know we don't have to go into detail on this one and this wasn't listed, but overall, what is your favorite game of last year? And I'd have to go with Valheim. Was it, wasn't it favorite game of the year? Was that not the first thing? We yeah, that's the first thing. Well, you said favorite <laughs> game, but like overall, best overall, like I would say Valheim. That was why that's why I chose Operation Tango. Yeah. That's my favorite game well, last that's, year. That's, 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 well, the, that's what I was saying. That's what favorite, favorite means. No, that's what overall. favorite means. What no, are you talking about? 
What? His favorite doesn't mean always the most played game. Doesn't right. mean that That's why there were two separate things. Category. Are you okay? Know. Whatever. Which Mine's one of us had the mind. stroke? I'm like, I'm actually oh confused. <laughs> <laughs> Do you smell burnt toast right now? Because that uh. that was like that was the first question. That's like, like I said, that's like it, overall game. Because, most overall game. Yeah. Overall what does it even mean? mean? Your, does it mean that it's the most played or most favorite or so, best feature wait, wait, or best out of best, nowhere? Best movie of the year. Do they not mean best overall? We didn't say best everything. favorite game. We didn't say best game of the year. We said favorite game. Yeah, it was oh because my it's God. not my a favorite. Doesn't mean it. You was said the best. most. You said mo- your your wording was most favorite overall game. But that doesn't make any sense because we already said well, my favorite did, game. Listen, I, I'm I'm not one to jump up and defend Mike all the time on this podcast, but he did change oh. his verbiage several times. <laughs> That's worse. <laughs> That's Whatever. worse, Brian. That makes it worse. That Give makes he understood minutes. he was wrong. Give us a few minutes. Stick with us. We'll be back after this break from a word from our sponsor. Messing with Mike is my uh, favorite overall game. <laughs> <laughs> That was delicious. Uh, <laughs> I'm scared. Do we edit that out? All of a sudden. Okay, and we're coming back from break, and it's in five, four, <laughs> and two. Yeah. Mike is definitely having a stroke. Chat. We obviously, yeah, agreed. James to... sucks. Yes, Mike is definitely having a stroke. We uh we get we go into what we've been playing typically this time a little different we're gonna, we're gonna talk about what we've been playing stuff that's current uh, and then also um, we're gonna talk about a little bit later about just things in the future that we're we're like looking forward to in this new year so yeah well Kelly take away game of the moment because uh, that, that was all you're doing I feel like yeah. this past week thanks um so it's in, in the best. In most amazing possible way, because because Mike had a blast too. He sound he sounded almost negative on that. And yeah. what? No, it was good. It was great. I actually played more by yeah. myself and oh, beat a couple God. rooms. Oh, you played. played. Well, uh, on that note, Escape Simulator is a game that you can play by yourself. Escape Simulator. That's not um, the only game you can play by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, With an ASMR voice. That, <laughs> yeah. Um, so there is a person. Uh, I'm just going to call you out, Peanut Butter Mongoose. Um, let me know when you've got a situation where you can play on a PC and play this game, because I think you specifically would love that. To those in yeah. chat, you join our chat. Or... Oh, yeah, we can maybe really get a escape room group together and go yes. together yeah. to escape. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that topic's going to come back up in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, escape simulator is a super fun game. If you are a fan of escape rooms, um, but don't want to leave your house because the Rona is still here. Um, definitely, definitely check this one out. Uh, you still argue and fight <laughs> like you yes. would in a normal yeah. escape room. It's first um, person perspective. Yeah. Somebody, somebody's yep. got some information that they're not sharing with other people. Um, yep. Somebody has a, a book, book on their open, belt and then they, yeah. And then they close it and you're like, open the effing book back up. Like we need to handle well, this okay, together. So we yeah. got to explain that a little bit more. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. So it's first person perspective and you of course can pick things up and move things around and interact with things. But one of the cool things is you can pick up a book and you can open it. Well, when someone does that, you can see them. They have a book simulated floating in front of them Mm -hmm. and you can go over there. And as you put it in the center of your screen, a little magnifying lens shows up and you can click it and you can see the book at the same time they do. And yeah. actually, kind of similar to Operation Tango, you can see both your cursors on there too. So you could talk yeah. about it. And you could like circle an area. You couldn't can't draw, but you can at least. But, but yeah, but you can really also cool be like, uh, no, 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 Bruno, you're not looking. at... No, no, to the left, to the left. That's where that's that's where it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a cool aspect of <laughs> being able to view other people's um, items that they have. Yeah, but. Yeah, it, it was a very interesting game. As a person who does like escape rooms, I'm not saying I'm a pro, um, but I do. He's enjoy like, it. I'm not saying I'm a pro, but 
I'm pretty effing good. <laughs> I, eh, I'm good at certain things. And, and just like everyone, I mean, just like, you know, us four, if we were to, mm. like, and just in this example we played, uh, there were certain things that I keyed in on. There were certain things that you keyed in on, you know, Bruno, mm-hmm. Brian. Um, and, that, and that's the way it should be. Because mm. the real reason, you know, the escape rooms are fun is, especially when you play, um, well, out, for example, my first experience was, uh, you know, my wife had, surprised me with the birthday and it was like we're going to this place never been to an escape room before never even really heard of this and we go in and it's like me and her uh and my brother and his wife and there was four of us and there was six other people in this room that we've never met before and we're like okay person tells us what's going to happen and they're like all right go and we're like uh hi i'm mike uh <laughs> and, it, and it's this weird at first yeah. this exchange of like okay, I've been here before. And some people are like, I haven't been here before. And everybody's like, what do we do? And we're trying to figure out you know, how to be friends with strangers and like how to figure out what everybody's good at. And, yeah. and it's a neat experience to have, especially, you know, when we have four of us like virtually, like we still, you know, we've worked, you know, we, we've, we've all, you know, worked well together in different, like different games and things, but the escape room is a different level because there's different levels of like intricacy and, and thought process. So, for example, there was a book that we were looking at and there was a puzzle that we were trying to get a uh, certain uh, combination from. And there was this a combination lock that had ended up four being books. one of my favorite puzzles because it took us so yeah. long and each yeah. one of us contributed to it. Yeah. yeah, and it was, so the four books, I found a book that had the four books labeled at the very top and I was like, oh, so I'm reading well, the page because it's like an actual yeah. book. Like I'm fully reading the page and, and the page had something about like, on the first night, this happened, but on the fourth night, this happened. There's a total of eight days, and on the sixth night, this happened, and and then the fourth or the second night, this happened. So I'm like, oh, the total is eight, and we obviously need to add these number, these four numbers are the four numbers that add up to eight, uh, which they didn't. But I tried a combination. And I'm like, that's not working. Like, what's going on? Maybe I'm, yeah. maybe it's out of order. And I'm like trying to, and I'm trying to really just dive into this. And Brian's and there were like, page numbers, <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, it just so happened that because of technical difficulties, I was more of an observer at this point. And I was like, oh, I saw this weird thing. I was like, oh, none of the books have a number on a particular part of the book. And Bruno was very patient. He goes, no, look at all these books. There's no number there. No number, no number, no number, no number. And so we kind of moved the on. Books on the floor. We made a mess. <laughs> yeah. And then Bruno was like, I'm done with this. I'm looking for something else. And he found a key. He's like, what's this key do? It opens this up. Oh my God, there's two more books in there. And I was like, there, 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 there's the number. And Bruno's like, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and between all the things that we had figured out, we figured out what the code is for the combination lock. Um, I would like to mention really quick before we move on, four players, up to four players, I should say, in various different themed locales and they'll have yeah. like five or six rooms that you go through in that themed locale. We did three in this like kind of almost Victorian so, mansion type yeah. thing. Um, uh, kind of cutesy, almost yeah. Pixar type graphics. Yeah. Very, but very attractive looking. If you, if you like puzzles, you'd really enjoy it. I would yeah. n- like, I can't, I wouldn't suggest doing it on your own because it's more unless you're crazy it. like me, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's different. The, uh, I will say if you've not done an escape room in real life, um, I would say maybe check this game out first yeah, and see if it kind of intrigues you. Actually. Yeah. Um, cause it's not for everybody. And I've had friends that have like gone for the first time and they really wanted to like it. And we got there and they were done. We were just like, I just didn't really feel like I contributed and, and they may have, but they're just like, they, they didn't really, they felt more defeated than they, they felt accomplished. And, yeah. and, and that happens. I mean, not everybody yeah. has a wanting to, not to mention the anxiety of being locked in a room. Now, let me mm-hmm. clarify that in the U S they're not allowed to physically lock you in the room because of fire. Code. <laughs> they can't actually lock the door. So you're always <laughs> able to get out. Um, but, you know, some people still feel anxiety because we're in this closed, small, usually a pretty small room unless you unlock something and it maybe open something else. Um, so there is that. So, you know, and especially with COVID times, everybody's locked into kind of a small room. You know, maybe not something that everybody wants to do right now, but um, I would definitely check this game out. And what I also noticed, which I thought was really cool, we didn't talk about this, 
um, is that it does have uh, the workshop available from Steam. So there is all of the maps that they've created, and there's also workshop maps that people, like the, uh, the players, have created. So there's also that, too, which will also extend the, the replayability of the game. Uh, well, so, and see, the, the replayability is one of the things I wanted to talk about because that's one of the things that we tried first was Kelly and I had already gone through one of the scenarios. Yeah. And we kind of knew the answer to some of the riddles. And we were curious of like, okay, yeah, they're not going to change the puzzles that much, but maybe they change up the numbers, the combinations. Yeah. And it ended up that uh, from beginning to end through that one scenario we went through, it was pretty much identical, yeah. which kind of reduces the replayability. Uh, and it, it, in, in some ways that's, kind of disappointing because like a real escape room yeah they're not going to change it too much because then they'd have to change out padlocks or they'd have to change out you know the padlocks and the clues and, and that's that's a lot of intent you know it's a very work intensive thing to do for a physical escape room mm -hmm. for a virtual escape room it shouldn't be that difficult to be able to randomize some of that stuff um but still i mean mm -hmm. they had a bunch of different locations and six each so there was still hours of entertainment yeah. And to um, Zaisia's point uh, about like, if you've never been in an escape room, go try this first. And also some people don't feel like they contribute a lot. There were definitely some escape rooms that I had been in over the course of the, the two different times we played it that I felt like I didn't contribute a whole lot. But there are other games I felt like I other um, rooms I did feel like I contributed to. So you don't play, you don't spend a whole lot of money and play just one escape room and then leave feeling like defeated. You play, you can play multiple escape rooms in the same night and feel like, Oh, well I may not have contributed to a whole lot in these two, but Oh my gosh, this Egyptian room, I solved three puzzles on my own. And so, so another point to that in IRL is that very much so read reviews of the escape rooms you're going to attend in person. I've been to there's there's a few places that I like to go to because they are like literally one's owned by a family and their whole family is like about puzzles, like they're puzzle enthusiasts and like they love the fact that people can like solve the things they come up with. And it's like really neat stuff. It's almost you feel like, you know, like Indiana yeah. Jones, like solving things. Um, like literally you would pick something up and something else moves or some other door opens up and you're like, what the hell? Like, that's so awesome. Um, and I've also played some that are just literally padlocks. Like everything is a combination lock. Ugh. So there's no, there's no puzzle. It's just finding you numbers. Figure it out. Oh, so we'd, no. we'd no, no, find no, no, no. a number, a set of numbers, and we'd have to go to like 10 padlocks or 10 combination locks to try to figure it, see which one open. And we'd open that one yeah. and there'd be another combination lock. And we're like, what the this is garbage like so yeah just the be nice very thing careful. is this game this game didn't have that problem yeah yeah uh, which just is be a careful which ones you do in irl because yes th they they can definitely steer you in the wrong direction and also, don't get discouraged either because like you could get a shitty one and then never want to play again but that's not how they're all are to be clear to the place. game on steam is called escape simulator no room in the name uh, and it is currently, I think, fourteen ninety nine. So, I mean, for fifteen oh, bucks, the, the Steam sale is over. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, for fifteen bucks, for the hours and hours of entertainment that's in this, that that it can be a multiplayer game if you want it to be, but you can play solo like uh, as I see it. Only like crazy people. Yeah. So actually, let me ask you real quick, because I see it. So when we played the escape room as a team, mm -hmm. all four of us, yep. uh, the time limit was like 12 minutes or something. Yep. OK, it's like 15, when you I think at most. So did you play when you played it on your own? Same. Still OK, still same time. Limit. Oh, so is you, it harder in some aspects? Is it easier in some aspects? Oh, well. It, and it's not nothing with you with y'all. It'd be anybody. When you introduce more people with thoughts on how things may happen, like it takes longer. But at the same time, like that puzzle with the, the book, I wouldn't have solved that because I would have been still focusing on like the numbers, <laughs> the you numbers. know, 
the numbers, Mason, the numbers. Yeah. So. Cool. What else did you guys play? I, uh, <clears throat> a sad story that leads into this. My Vive lighthouse has died yet again. So I'm, I'm done with my Vive uh, and I bought a Quest 2. Um, and after buying it, I started playing a game called A Township Tale, which is a survival, multiplayer survival game in VR. <clears throat> so, like, you, you try and build up this town with your friends, and there's hosted servers. And, uh, yeah, you, like you have, like, classes. You, you, like, there's mercenaries, there's blacksmiths, there's carpenters, there's archers etc and you uh you can level up by doing all those things and there's like a mine similar to stardew valley that has like hundreds of levels and you can go through it there's like elevators every 10 levels that you get to use as a checkpoint um you go out and it's got a finite amount of resources so a lot of the areas are randomly generated and you just try and build and survive but in vr it's cool, cool. Uh, i'm erasing my search bar I was into this until he said VR. <laughs> uh, I would I mean, really like to get into VR. I would really like to to actually like it. Just seems so cool to me. I've never actually experienced an actual VR anything. You should me. at least experience. I, I, it I totally want to. I totally um, and want. I, and to. I mean, actual VR, not like the daydream, like the the pixel, like you put, put a phone in. Yeah, like no, it, no, it's no, good. No. But it's not the same experience of actually doing yeah. like full res high graphics, like like a quest or a vibe or something like that, where you're you're literally experiencing the and also the well, free mean, movement, like being able to even walk the, around. Even the Sony one was fine, especially for like playing Beat Saber. That's that's pretty awesome. Well, yeah. one of my well, I'm friends just saying, like not the me, phone kind, like I have. Yeah, one of my friends was telling yeah. me that there's like a, a a game about like heights, and I am. Yep deathly afraid of heights deathly yeah. afraid of heights. Would freak out yes so but they were saying that it's a, a great way to help get over your fears so yeah. i can't drive over some bridges in atlanta because of this fear of heights so i think it'd be a really well, great way to i mean think about it like your your brain and your eyes are what tell you mm -hmm. what you see right yeah so if you've in take those and you enclose them into a small little area and that's all you see, you're going to feel like yeah. you're doing that thing. Um, there's a good subreddit. You're doing called, that thing. Uh, it's called uh, VR to ER. Okay. You should look that one up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's people doing like the craziest things and like trying to punch something and they just punch their TV or jump something and they just <laughs> fall on the ground. Like, I, I okay, Bruno, <laughs> that was sick. The dude picked up one side of the pickaxe and the handle of the pickaxe and he put them close to each other. And there was this like green energy between the mm -hmm. two of them and it like sucked together and created a the pickaxe. crafting is wild. Like you actually have to go and grab pieces of wood and put them in like oh. a lathe kind of thing. And you have like a chisel and a hammer. You like have to like actually break certain parts of the wood and like the order the that you break the wood, the is wood good. off, like the, the order that you chisel the wood off of when you're like crafting like handles for items, like, is specific to the item you're crafting. So like if you remember the order that you do it in, you can craft it without a recipe. Um, and just like you just go wow. grab a piece of wood and just do it. Um, and then uh, additionally, like everything that you do in terms of using any kind of tool or weapon, uh, the usefulness of it is determined by how you swing Dual it wielding. and how you hold it. So like if you have a giant two handed axe, but like you hold it in a stupid way or with just one hand, it's got it's got reduced capabilities. Um, whereas on the other hand, if you like if you properly swing something back, you get more out of it than if you just spammed it really close. So like the amount of force and speed you hit something with translates into something in the game. Yeah. By the way, the channel is Shughead Gaming and it looked like he was having a blast. Ah. <sighs> So, sorry, I... Kelly, I think uh, we may have lost you. So, am I here? Sorry, I was. <laughs> no. What game was... did you start playing recently? Oh, 
Well, you haven't lost me yet because apparently my kids are going to be home again next week, virtual school and whatnot. Um, but I've been trying to get lost very much in Skyrim. <laughs> um, it, so far, it's a lot of freaking fun. I'm a Nord um, because, you know, of my yeah. family heritage. Yep. And <laughs> I tried to make my character look as much like me as possible, which is not perfect. But I did do the big blood handprint on the mouth. So I thought that was cool. Um, it has been a lot of fun. I messed up initially. Uh, there's a part where after you get through the first, the tunnels and stuff, which are super cool. Um, and you've got your friend and he's like, I, oh, we should probably split up. And I was like, oh, okay. And then he keeps talking. I was like, Oh, hold on. He's talking to me still. I guess we won't. And then he was like, good thing you stuck with me. And I was like, it was a good thing. And also sorry for trying to steal your shield. And then you killed me. So I've been <laughs> making my way through and trying not to do things like steal people's food until they offer it to me. <laughs> and <laughs> well, unless you're sneaking. How's <laughs> that? Yeah. I was like, oh, no. Um, so far, it's been really awesome. I will uh, give you guys some updates. Um, there's a good chance that I will uh, spend many days bloodshot eyes uh, because I'm trying to stay away yes. because I've been playing too much. Scarf. That's why. <laughs> that's why have we lost Kelly? almost almost i almost got back on last night and um i was like nope too late what was it bed. you told us you were like man i started playing at nine o'clock and then i blinked and it was 11 we're like yeah i was like I go to skyrim <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah my wife yeah. is the same way and she blinked and it was 5 a.m and she's like oh yeah. i'll Ooh, just oh it's 5 a.m <laughs> take a shower and make a cup of coffee and then i'll just play a little bit more <laughs> Yeah, right? I, I mean, that. it's already day. Why would you go to sleep now? No. Open up the drapes. Yeah, so. So I'll uh, give you guys some updates on that one. Yeah, let me know when you mm -hmm. figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> when you figure that out. Ah, well, I've been playing a game. Not a new game. Uh, and it's... So, so what do you know about gotcha games? I know gotcha. zero about gotcha games. And that's G O C H A, not gotcha. It's oh. gotcha. Gotcha. See, yeah, <laughs> different, gotcha. different than that. So the concept is uh, so, so gotcha vending machines in Japan are these vending machines <gasps> where. Yes. See this, yes. Yeah. Now, see, we're putting the dots together. Uh, the whole concept is you, you, you get a little capsule and you don't know what's in it and you open it up and it's a toy. And, and a lot of people will collect the series and they want Kurosuchi. a complete series. So they're <laughs> trying to like get as many out of the, this thing as possible. And they keep putting money in into it, hoping to get the right one out, but it's random each time. Or you could just call it loot boxes. Cause mm -hmm. that's really what it is. But by the way, when if it you guys want to go be... to the revolving sushi bar and play the gotcha game, <laughs> I need all the help I can get. More plates. <laughs> See, okay, we yeah, okay. we've lost Kelly again. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I've been playing Genshin Impact, which is uh it's a it's a lot of people have likened it to the anime Breath of the Wild which I don't think is very fair for either game. Uh, it's, it's a very well-made game. It does it's a have some wild looking game. Yeah, it's uh, there are some similarities where uh, you, you can climb anything in this. And actually, and, you know what this looks like? It looks like Craftopia. Oh, it's so much better. Yeah, Craftopia so better. is so much better. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, Craftopia is a terribly hey. made game. Mm, no, yeah, but it has a very small cost associated with it to progress versus this game, which either costs you this, your life this is true. or your wallet. If yeah, <laughs> if you want to put money into, if you just want to play it for fun, it's it's got nice graphics. It's free to play. Uh, the it where they get you, and this is probably where they got you. This is probably the part <laughs> they hate most. 
that I hate most is that it's literally pay to win. Uh, because because it isn't cosmetics that you are getting out of the loot boxes. It's literally characters and weapons. And there are some characters that are significantly better than others. And so if you put a lot of money into this and got some of the S tier rank characters, here I am climbing something. Mm. There we go. Um, Cause this is actually me playing. If you didn't notice yeah. the lower left hand corner. Um, oh my God. That's you. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, some people look at the center of the screen. Uh, this was actually a fun fight because you could hit the water and then you could do a freeze spell and you could freeze them and attack them while they're frozen. And then I was knocking them off the cliff as they were frozen. So that was pretty cool. I was like, oh shit, I knocked them off the cliff. I Take still haven't figured out how these games haven't got sued by Nintendo. Oh. And I know you've gone in this whole thing. Oh, well, you can't trademark you, all this crap. You, this no, is you can't the copyright. Wild, man. This copyright, is literally the same game. You're <laughs> thinking copyright. It's exactly the same. This is, there, no, it, no, it doesn't. Well, there, yeah, there's, does. there's, they, uh, they first of the all, there's, there's tons the of character. This is a, this is a character RPG. That's all it is. It's, an action, it's, like, it's, a, it's an action RPG. I should say that commentary is like saying, I don't know how call of duty and rainbow six companies don't sue each other over the fact that yeah. the games look nearly identical. It's the same. It's the same thing. Sure. It's just an art I, style. I don't know mm. why blizzard didn't sue Nintendo for copying Diablo in creating breath of the wild. I mean, like there's, there's so many similarities that it doesn't matter. Uh, th- th- there's a lot of differences that for one, there's no freaking weapon degradation. <laughs> uh, their, their survival parts of this are very, very light. It's it's an, it had some interesting story. They have a living story that continues to progress. They continue to release more uh, new things, but in all reality, the the combat system is very simplistic, very simplistic. It's, it's almost rock paper scissors simplistic. Uh, there's different elements, and they react differently with different elements. Um, but there's some cool movement. There's some there's some cool animations. So it's definitely worth the price of free and playing it for, you know, a couple hours for some entertainment one day, if it's that, that type of game that you like. Uh, but, uh, I would not spend a whole bunch of money on it. In fact, I wouldn't spend any money on this. Well, I don't know if, if you enjoy it enough and you get 20, 30 hours of it and you want to drop $30 on it because that's 30 to $60 for the price of an average game, then <laughs> sure. But you, uh, don't, yeah. don't, don't go crazy spending money because every time you do something like try to get a character or you spend wishes to get characters, it's a loot box. I and wouldn't even, I wouldn't even go that far with it. And, and I'm definitely the person to, to usually argue this. If you're having fun and you want to put money towards it, do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I, and, I uh, in this last year I've spent money on games that I said I would never be a part yeah. of or associate subscriptions or whatever loot boxes. And you know what? I played these free games for so long. I threw some money at it. I didn't, I didn't say subscribed. I'm not like just yep. spending lots, loads of money, but I threw some money at it. I had fun with it. And you know, and if I give the developers 10 bucks and so be it. Uh, <clears throat> I would, the, the only caveat is the way they set up the loot boxes in this is hyper addictive. So oh, if you are uh, the type if you are the type that you would like, oh no, I got to spend the money to get that particular sort. Don't even play this game. Yeah. And to be clear, uh, the reason I don't like compare, like I don't like hard comparisons. We're like, oh, I don't know how this company is, hasn't been sued by Nintendo is because like the second you say that, I feel like it almost reduces breath of the wild to something that's even comparable to Genshin impact. When like breath of the They're wild has way more thought, Yes. structure yeah. behind it like you can't reduce that game to just its art style because it's art style something that somewhat existed beforehand and then when they did it even better everybody now wants to do it because it's just so eye-catching um, i mean fair now I mean, there, there is and and i want to differentiate too because a lot of the breath of wild thought that i see is just over the top amazing level design like there's there's things you're like, oh, I just want to climb this up this because I want to climb up this. It seems like a cool thing. And then like, holy shit, there's this hidden thing at the top. You know, Genshin Impact doesn't seem like it has that. Now, Genshin Impact 
does have a lot of thought put into its story. Yeah. They do all mm. they they do a lot more voice acting than I was expecting, and the voice acting is pretty good. The explanation um, I got on Bre- on uh, not Breath of the Wild on Genshin Impact from someone who plays it religiously is it's a fantastic game if you like the level design, which they actually said is very good, and if you're into anime waifus. And they said if you're not into both of those things, don't even bother because the <laughs> yeah. end game is not exactly the most in-depth experience. It's definitely a you play yeah. it for an hour a day and then you leave. Yeah, my understanding is, yeah, the end game is nothing. It's uh, the story up to that is great. And but then there's no end game. And and then you're just waiting for the next story arc. Yes. Secret Asian. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) So the game that I played, and this will be quick because uh, it's um, it's got a a pretty bad flaw. Um, So I played a game called Nine one one operator. Yeah, I, I saw you put this show. on the list, and I was like, <laughs> "I'm not even going to look it up. I want to find I, out what he said." I put it on the uh, Steam sale. I picked it up. It was just a game. It looked very interesting. It was like a dollar or ninety nine cent or something. Um, and it, it very much is exactly what the name is. You are the operator who answers the calls, and you have uh, a map, a grid, which was really cool. The, the cool part was when you load the game, it says, "Hey, I, I realized." You're in this city. Would you like me to download the map? And you're like, okay. So I could literally bring up the map of the city that I'm in and see like all the roads that I'm familiar with. And you have like cops, you have Wait, ambulances, you have fire, like, fire like trucks. Like our city? Yes. Um, and you have all, and it has all the addresses and everything. And you have these phone calls that come in and you get to pick this, like the answers to them. And some are funny. Some are like literally 911, like, Hey, I'd like to order a pizza. Yeah. You're like, okay. Uh, do you realize you call? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like pepperoni, please. And you're like, are you really trying to call 911? And they're like, yeah. So uh, if you, what, how long is it going to take? And you're like, wait a minute. Is there someone around you that can't, you can't talk around? They're like, yeah. So is it going to be here soon? And so then you realize it's actually a real call. And and you get to the point where like you're like, OK, sending someone out immediately. So you actually send a police officer out and turns out oh. it's like a, a, a battery case. Um, so it was actually pretty neat, like things like that, like things you would think that were being like a joke, but actually turn into like a real scenario that you've heard of before, because people do. I've heard stories yeah, of like that's people actually doing that. Yeah. And yeah, so there's some of those. There's actually, you know, hey, my cat's in the tree. I'm really sorry that I have to call you guys, but can we get a fire truck out here to, you know, get my cat in the tree? So there's different scenarios like that. Just just real quick, FYI, if your cat, if you've ever gotten a cat stuck in a tree, sometimes they actually do climb too high and they cannot get down. They dead serious call a um, tree cutter place. The I've had a little to drink. Yeah, like a tree removal place. Yeah, they will get your cat out of the tree. Just arborist but, yes that makes no sense. not an arborist not an arborist not um, planting trees but tree tree yeah <laughs> tree like a, yeah tree cut it's a tree, tree removal like yeah um, yeah, removal. yeah yeah depending yeah. on where you are in the states apparently the official term for someone who cuts trees is still arborist that's what they're labeled oh, really? period yeah that just oh, depends on the period. state some states will oh. actually differentiate the two of them and others will not they are all the same thing if you deal oh, with trees yeah. you are an arborist period. end of story oh. yeah oh, cool so so all of that was cool, and the idea is you get a the call, you know. whatever you're going to do, um, you literally click the <laughs> unit that you're going to select, and you basically click the endpoint, and it basically drags them there. The problem that I had was when you got them to that location, you can, if you have multiple units on top of each other, you cannot click to toggle between the units you have stacked on each other. Oh, weird. So in this case, when it came to the actual task at hand and the unit that I've sent there, they're now on top of each other. So every time I clicked the unit, it would click the task. And then when I tried to do that, Um, it would send another unit that I highlighted earlier (laughs) to that location. And I'm like, no, 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 no. no. Go back and do this other thing. I need this guy. And I click it again. He goes, okay, sir, come in that way. I'm like, no. It was so frustrating that I turned the game off and I was like, I'm never playing this again. because, (laughs) like. I can't enjoy myself if like every time I click something, something else is coming to the location I'm trying to get at. And I looked online and people were like, yep, this is a thing. And I'm like, I'm done. So, so 1499, uh, if you too just want to turn this, there game is off. Uh, a one, 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 two simulator. 
or operator it's like the, oh. the part two of this game i don't know if that one's any better uh but i would hope they had to fix that because if they didn't fix that i am definitely i i i was intrigued of the, the concept but yeah. i don't know if i'll continue so that's my uh, two cents. i would also like to point out that the the video that i was demonstrating there is from gary still plays so no you're not going to know what city mike is in yeah <laughs> <laughs> Unless I mean, you've listened to our other podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just a general metropolitan area that we talk about. <sighs> uh, not me. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So just continuing the topic at games, but not necessarily games we've played, just more of we love games and games are coming out. Like, this oh, is not oh, the oh, bad old days. It used to be you would finish up Christmas time and there was a drought until like summer pretty much. Um, except for maybe some particular sports games that were more timely on certain things. Uh, it used to be like it was April, May. It was pretty much May. You, you waited until May and then like some stuff would come out and then, and then once Madden came out in the, you know, like, Oh, early Madden. fall or late summer. That's when all the games started coming out again. And there was just, they were all bunched up in these couple of months. It was terrible. February is next month. And we I got just saw a cat. Yep. Uh, I I'm, I've been seeing yep. the cat all night. Yep. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Mm. Oof. No comment. No, nah, wrong kitty. Not the kitty. Like, between you and no. Bruno, we're going to get banned. <laughs> no. Uh, What's the only so game? February's got a lot, a lot of games <clears throat> coming out. Bruno, you said you had some that you were really, really excited about. Uh, yeah. In, in January, I'm interested to see how the new Pokemon game does, though I assume it's going to be garbage because they've lost uh, any want to innovate even though this looks like it's the first time they're going to try it worries me that they're not doing enough but we'll see um but february lost ark is finally having its north america release which i'm excited for it's an action mmo rpg or it's, it's an action rpg similar to diablo but a complete mmorpg setting uh, or mmo setting i should say yeah and then like a week and a half after that um elden ring is coming out on February 25th, which I am super excited for since it is from the creators of Dark Souls. It is another Soulsborne esque game. And got it. So I'm not playing that one. All right, cool. The <laughs> dang man. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's another it's another Soulsborne game that I'm excited for, and uh, it's interesting because uh, one of the writers for it is actually George R. R. Martin. Wow. Is the story writer for it. So but he finished his book rather than Nah. Nope. Yeah. He's too busy making the well, next game that I'm going to, to play. To be fair, if the rumors are true, he didn't spend a lot of time writing this one. Yeah, probably not. I mean it's it's a Souls game. So, so. it'd be like instead of this big, it'd be like okay. Yeah, pretty much. What are we talking about? Wait, we talking about the book? Yeah. Okay. Just okay, sure. I'm sorry. I th- I thought Brian was talking about the game. Souls, Souls games don't usually have a ton of dialogue in them. No, so. I always talk about the game, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was talking about from the middle. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, and yeah, Horizon for Horizon uh Forbidden West is coming out as well. Yeah. Um, well I saw one that you ended up being exciting about too, because you hadn't heard as much about it yet. But the <laughs> Not quite a reboot, but definitely a reimagining of like the art style and and a lot of the game is Saints Row is coming out, oh. like February twenty fifth. Um, uh, I'm super excited about that one. As much I as just, I love Saints Row, it's a terrible day to release. <laughs> uh, whatever. So, I'm. Obviously, I said before, Harry Potter, I'd love to see that game actually be fun, but I don't really have a lot of a lot of faith, uh, faith we'll in that one. I feel like I feel like you're coming out of the gate with some preconceived notions, but the Harry Potter franchise has been so 
good. Oh yeah, but with that's... everything that I think. Well, well, oh, they, well, there's been a lot of stinker games with it. They they've put, okay. they've slapped that license on a lot of shit. Here's uh, another thing that they, worries me about Star it. Star Wars is, the hell out of it. If you look into that game, I wasn't joking I, I know, when I made right. a comment about you're the right. fact that the company Hogwarts making Legacy. it, I think the last game they made was actually Cars 2 the game. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a studio that okay, is known I take it back. Never for mind. developing yeah. Cars great 3 video. driven to uh, win uh, 2017. I stand corrected. It's very um, worrisome that that's the studio they duh. chose. That's all I have to say. Oof, Chad duh. also mentions that February is the month that Dying Light 2 comes out. Uh, also, Vampire the Masquerade, which had a very... Boy, when they showed the trailer of that, it was like, oh, so you're releasing a game with a like a 2007 to 2010 kind of motif for first person? Because... It looked like it was made in the Quake engine. <laughs> uh, that's that should be interesting. A Lost Ark. Bruno, tell us about Lost Ark. Um, I mean, I had already mentioned it, it's an action. Oh, I missed RPG, like an MMO action RPG. So think like Diablo, but modernized a bit and very uh it, it was very tooled towards the asian market initially because that's where it released years ago and now they're bringing it to north america um so i'm excited for it i played the last beta for it and had a lot of fun um unfortunately it just drops at a really weird time kelly what's one of the games you're looking forward to even if it doesn't come out <laughs> in february uh it comes out Q1 2022. We've already mentioned it. Choo Choo Charles. <laughs> oh my God. I forgot about that. <laughs> I'm interested uh, in that. Just because. Uh, so um, there is a, a if, if you have not seen any um, of the video of the Choo Choo Charles uh, game, we did report on an article about Choo Choo Charles. Oh gosh, maybe back in October or September. Um, but there's also a uh, Venga Boys, the We Like to Party. We like, we like to put that song. Um, Google that or uh, YouTube Venga Boys and Thomas the Tank Engine or Thomas oh, yeah, the Train or whatever. And you're welcome. Yeah. A minute and a half. <laughs> so and it reminds me of it. Go. <laughs> There's a few other games I'm looking forward to, and this one going from least interested to most interested uh, would be Stalker 2. They they lost my it respect on a little good. bit of that with the NFT thing, so I'm like kind mm -hmm. of worried that they're worried about that. Good. I was hoping better, but we'll see how that goes. So that I'd say Stalker 2, uh, followed by um, probably going to be, I would say probably Starfield, um, because Bethesda hoping for a new single player game that's going to be awesome don't necessarily have too much faith uh and then then above that uh is nightingale so mm -hmm. the nightingale game that came out it's coming out uh, it's the x bioware or bioshock um developers are making it it looks like a crafting sort of victorian style like time traveling esque game uh looks pretty interesting uh and then obviously the top of the list would be breath of the wild 2 because at least I know that Nintendo will deliver, even if it is their next Majora's Mask. I'll be okay with it. Rumbleverse, definitely I looking am. forward to Rumbleverse. Um, I know that James the Great's probably looking forward to that since it is wrestling themed. Uh, but uh, we we probably will be playing some of that. Well, cool. That uh. Anything else for you, Brian, on that list for next year or this no, year? You just reminded me of when you talked about Nightingale because uh, Nightingale because I signed up for both yeah. those games. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, I need to go back and check that email because I definitely got an email about that. Y'all need to stream that. Mm hmm. 
Oh, it'll be more than streamed. Yeah. Some of us, some, there'll be plenty of us playing that. I'll watch it. Uh, that's yeah. it for me. Well, that's what got our attention this week. Uh, if you are interested in uh, checking out all of our um, links and such social, uh, check out uh, sasgaming.com where you can find all of our links for all of our things. Uh, and if you want to check out us and uh, maybe support us a little more than normal, uh, just go to patreon.com slash sasgaming. That'll get you there as well. And that's pretty much it. So uh, no emails this week, but feel free to send us an email. GOA at sasgaming.com. We love getting emails. But uh, yeah, it's been great. Thank you guys. I hope you guys have a great new year. I'm glad we're all together. I'm actually pretty excited about this new year coming up. uh, The year that we're now in, uh, because I feel like, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we can get accomplished this year. And, you know, hopefully things will keep moving forward like we've been doing. So until next week. Ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, have a good night. See ya.